A debate is raging in the world of sport over the controversy of transgender athletes. American swimmer Leah Thomas is one athlete at the centre of the debate. Thomas previously competed on the men's team at the University of Pennsylvania until 2019, but began hormone therapy later that year. Some teammates say that biologically, Leah holds an unfair advantage and points to the rankings, which have bounced her from 462nd as a male to number one as a female. So joining me now in the studio is former long-distance athlete Mara Yamochi. Now, Mara, thank you so much for joining me. Uh, now, you're the third fastest British female marathon runner of all time. But actually, up until this last week, you were second on that list. And I don't want to seem insensitive by bringing <laughs> that up. How does that feel? Yeah, so... As you said, until a week ago, I was the second fastest British female marathon runner of all time, second only to former world record holder Paula Radcliffe. Uh, held that record for 16 years. And <laughs> thank you. <laughs> it does deserve a uh, applause, surely. <laughs> um, and this, this was a big deal for me. Of course. Um, and I was pushed down into third by a young upcoming athlete called Jess Piasecki. And I have to say it was, it was quite a shock. Um, but she's, you know, she's, I totally accept that she went faster than me. She's a better athlete than me. I congratulated her. I'm really pleased for her. But in the context of the debate about transgender athletes, I have to say, if this had been a male athlete taking this achievement from me, I would have been pretty furious, I have to say, because it's unfair. Well, that issue, when we look at the, the footage of Leah Thomas quite clearly outflanking the others by some margin, you know, really breaking these records. And then you wonder sometimes how do the other athletes feel about it? And we rarely hear from them. And why, why would that be? Yeah. Why are more people not saying what they feel about this? Well, we've heard that the University of Pennsylvania has been silencing them and telling them that if they speak up about it, you know, they won't get a job or, you know, just telling them they can't speak up. But also... Uh, fear of cancellation is very real. I mean, I've been cancelled since I started speaking up about in, in defence of women's sport. Uh, I'm in touch with a number of young, still competing female athletes. Every one of them says, I agree with you 100%. All my, all my training buddies, teammates agree, but I'm too scared to say anything uh, because I will get cancelled. And, you know, this is the, fu the future of women's sport is at stake here because for every trans woman who competes in the female category, it affects hundreds, thousands of women. I mean, we can come on to that later, if you like. Um, this, the future of women's sport is at stake. And, um, you know, we heard from Shara Ali of the Green Party earlier, we must be able to debate these things in mm. a rational well, manner. Well, that's the key thing, isn't it? It's interesting that you say that people are contacting you privately. And they're, yeah. they're, they're, you know, I mean, if you are, I mean, you know more than anyone of the, 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 the effort you have to put in, the commitment it takes yeah. to, to get, become the top of your game yeah. and yeah. to have that taken away by someone who has a, just an innate biological advantage. That must be a yeah. terrible Yeah, I mean, feeling. if this had been happening when I was young and competing, I would have kept my head down, no question. Mm. You know, training and competing at world level is so hard anyway. You know, financially, it's quite unstable as well. You don't want to do anything which is going to jeopardise your career. And I had a dream to become a, an Olympic a world-class athlete from age 11. It took me 25 years to reach the start, 24 years to reach the start line of an Olympics. Yes. Are you going to throw all that away? You, you know, by, yes. by getting involved in controversies? I completely understand why currently competing athletes don't want to speak up. And that's part of the reason why I am speaking up, because I'm older, I'm retired, I have less to lose. What sort of uh, attention have you had by, for saying this thing? What sort of things have happened? Uh, well, in December, a, a US runner, prominent in the US running scene, tried to get me sacked from my commentating for the BBC on the London Marathon, which I've done for nearly eight years mm. now, uh, called me a hateful transphobic woman, which I thought was quite... It was quite interesting that he used the word woman. He didn't say hateful trans yes. and transphobic as a description. Um, that is interesting because a lot of the, the vitriol towards women in particular who speak out yeah. often seems disproportionately severe. Um, am yes. I just imagining that? that... No, no, that's my impression as well. And I've been told by another prominent person in the athletics world, I must be more respectful of Leah Thomas. Well, yes, you know, I, I believe trans people must be able to live their lives without harassment and discrimination in peace, like everybody. Yes. But we must be able to talk about fairness and 
you know, it is, it is unfair and wrong for male athletes to compete in the female category because they have massive physical advantages ranging from roughly sort of 10, 11% in things like running and swimming up to 160% in punching power. Yes. And the, the sort of fix which has been come up with by sports organisations to fix this, um, which is testosterone suppression, simply doesn't work. The evidence yes. shows that those advantages are retained. Yes, because it's through puberty. If, uh, if you go through puberty as yeah. a male, you have these, these sort of innate advantages yeah. there, which yeah. are there forever, effectively. And there's yeah. not much you can do about yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, a, a tiny amount of those advantages. I think haemoglobin comes down to female levels quite quickly. But basically, you know, some aspects of male advantage never change. So yes. skeleton shape, for example, wider pelvis means female femurs are at a less helpful angle for efficient running. Right. Those things never change. Your skeleton shape never changes. So lots of things never change. Others change minimally. So males retain massive physical advantages. And we've seen some evidence of this in Leah Thomas's performances. What do you think can be done? Uh, because, as you say, the accusation is of hate. Yeah. I mean, this is quite a severe accusation. And, of, and, you know, good people don't want to be accused of having hateful ideas yeah. about the world, particularly when they just don't. I mean, you've just described yeah. how... You, you, you support equal rights for everyone. Yeah, yeah. So, so what do we do about that? Because that seems to be the go-to accusation. Yeah, I think, well, we, we, people have to understand that women have, must have female-only single-sex spaces for good reason. Mm. And that basically boils down to men being physically more powerful. So that, you know, that has implications for violence in sport, you know, prisons across the board. Yes. So we must be able to talk about those things openly. And, you know, groups like Sex Matters, which Maya Forstater founded, you know, they campaign for um, clarity in the law, in policy, in government over sex. And they say you should not... It should not take courage to say these basic facts like there are only two sexes, you cannot change your sex and so on. But it definitely does take courage, and we know that mm. by the paucity of the numbers of people who are speaking out about it. And you sp yeah. you're speaking as an athlete, someone from within uh, yeah. that community. Um, can you give any sense of the extent to which athletes generally support your view on this? Because we're not yeah. really getting a clear sense about it. Yeah. Well, all the athletes I've spoken to support me. So they agree with my view that males should not compete in the female category. Um, I mean, people like Sharon Davis, Daley Thompson, Chris Tomlinson, former yes. long jumper, they're all, they all agree with me. I know some of the Penn swimmers uh, came out in support of Leah Thomas. Yes. But, you know, you wonder, female swimmers are facing unfair competition. They're being told to shut up. They won't get jobs if they speak up. How much freedom do they really have to speak the, what they genuinely feel? I suppose they feel that, that, that they're... They're doing it for a good reason, as in they want... Yeah. You know, the idea that... And this would be the counter-argument, wouldn't it? That if you're an athlete like Leah Thomas and you've been working at this all your life yeah. and then all of a sudden you have this sense that you are in the wrong body or you need yeah. to transition and you do go through that, is it not unfair that then you can't follow that vocation anymore, that that sort of vocation is cut off for you? I suppose yeah. that's what Well, I think n nobody is saying Leah Thomas can't identify as a woman. Anybody is free to identify however they wish. That's absolutely fine. And nobody's stopping them. But there are certain areas of life in which sex matters. And what I, that means male or female. And identity is meaningless. And sport is one of them. You know, we don't have competitions by voting preference or religion, for example. Yes. We have categories in sport by sex, by age, uh, by type of disability and by weight category. Yes. And that's all for good reason. Because if we didn't have those categories, the only people who would achieve anything in sport would be adult males. And, yes. and in some sports, it would be only the biggest, heaviest adult males. And that was um, the point of dividing sports into... Exactly. Uh, you, know, categories. You, you kind of have to come back to why does, women's, why does the female category exist? Mm. The reason it exists is because between the best male and the best female, or other equivalently matched males and females, there will be thousands of men and boys who outperform the best female. Mm. So if we got rid of sex categories, you would never see female athletes. None of us would know who Paula Radcliffe is or Katie Ledecky or Sharon Davis. They wouldn't right. be anywhere. Can I ask how, uh, when this person did complain about you, what, by the way, with the BBC, what was the outcome of that in the end? Well, he deleted his tweet. He changed his Twitter handle. I thought that was the end of it. Yeah. 
But I've just discovered more recently in January that he reposted his abusive tweet yes. um, to his old Twitter account, which then was suspended, thankfully. OK. But I, I, want to have, I have a clear message for people who try to cancel me. I'm not going to shut up about this. They can cancel me all they want. This is about the future of women's sport. And, you know, I hope more people will speak up because it really, you know, it's not an exaggeration to say women's sport could disappear. I mean, we've seen with Leah Thomas, uh, you know, the num I've, I've done some sort of sums on the exclusion, the incidents of exclusion which mm. have happened um, because of her inclusion in the women's category. You know, she did three events last week at the Ivy League Championships, won them all. <clears throat> so three women were excluded from standing on the top of the podium and getting the gold medal, calling right. themselves champions. The three women who finished third were excluded from the silver medal position. The three women who finished fourth were excluded from the medal podium altogether. <laughs> the females who finished ninth were excluded from the A final and went in the B final. Same for the women who finished 17th. They went in the C final instead of the B final. You know, then you've got all the records that Leah has broken. All those women erased from the history books, yeah. those females. Uh, you know, one of them is an, a, a US Olympian, Kate Ziegler. Her record was broken. Um, and another point on records is that um, th there's a term fossilization, which means that records, if they're achieved by somebody with an unfair advantage, mm. they, they become out of reach of an ordinary female without an, any un unfair advantage. Yes. And some rec world records in athletics are like this because they were achieved back in the 80s in what's widely regarded as doping-assisted performances. And some of Leah's records, I haven't looked closely at what the previous records were, but there's a possibility that some of those will be fossilised. So no female will ever be able to break them. Right. Uh, and, you know, that, so that means not only have those females been erased who previously held the records, but all females into the future yes. cannot aspire to break those records. When you... I don't know that that's the case. I need to look at all the, the actual time. But even some of those uh, stats that you've mentioned there and the numbers of people who've been knocked off the podium, I mean, that's in yeah. incontestable. <laughs> and, and when you put it like that, because I often hear the counter-argument, people saying, yeah, but it's just occasionally... Mm. A trans athlete. This isn't a big problem. There's only yeah. one or two people. This is an argument we often hear. It's only a few. You know, it's only one trans woman in this in the swimming world in the US. But the implic the, the sort of effect is massive. And those stats I've just listed are only the ones we can measure. Mm. One of Leah's races has just been watched five. Well, there are five point one million views. You know, how many little girls who are good at swimming, parents of swimmers, are amongst those five point one million thinking? You know, is this coming to my swimming club or school? What's the point of me getting up at five o'clock every day to train? Should I give up? Yeah. <clears throat> so it goes really, the, the effects are massive. Well, Mariamucci, thanks very much for joining <laughs> me today on Free Speech Nation. Thank, Thank you. you.